welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're going to take a look at this beast that is the Sanyo personal cassette player and it's the M3330 dating all the way from around 1981. Now this particular thing was made in Japan as I say over 40 years ago and there she is and it really is some kind of beast. I mean it's massive. Look at this thing. I love it. It's really substantial. If you look at a cassette in terms of perspective for this this thing is it's just huge and look how deep it is it's about four times deeper than actual tape i was working on a uh, sony walkman for the channel the other day it was an auto reverse one i think a wm ex 508 and i could not believe that this thing was you know around about the same size as a cassette case and yet you know it's amazing how technology's moved on in that in all that time isn't it so anyway here we are with this particular sanyo example and you might notice it's a bit rough, it's a bit worn and a bit scuffed. But I've got to say, all in all, not too bad. All the print is still there. The ink is still legible. There's no sort of chunks or broken pieces or anything like that. The battery cover is present and the transport controls are all in good condition as well. So, yeah, I think overall this one is definitely worth saving. Now, I've got a bit of a spoiler alert. Normally we go through and we find these things, don't we? And we, we go through them and sort of troubleshoot them as we go. But I'll explain more in a second. Basically, this particular one doesn't work with the batteries. I just tried, it was a bit of a spring clean today. And I thought, I'm going to have a look at this old Sanyo, see if I can, uh, you know, listen to some tunes on it and get it cleaned up a bit. And I put some batteries in and it didn't work. Now, there is a battery indicator light that comes on when, when the thing's doing something. That wasn't working and none of the, uh, the, the reels, none of the spindles were turning or anything like that. So I did power it up. In fact, I've still got the, uh, I've still got the mains adapter here and it's a six volt negative earth barrel. So it's exactly the same as like your grandstand Astro Wars and stuff like that. So if I plug that in and press play, you might see, there you go, that the, uh, you can see the spindles turning, but slightly intermittently, and there's hardly any resistance at all. So, sign of a dodgy belt there. Now, I was a bit foolish because I was getting carried away with this one, I must admit, and I thought, well, I'll just put a tape in and have a listen. And I've been playing a few more, working on a few more today, and I've been doing quite well, to be fair. I hadn't had any nasty mishaps with them. And so I was actually trying this one out, and I'll just show you what happened. There is one of my favourite chrome tapes. Uh, <laughs> so I was so distracted with the other issues of this one that whilst I was having to listen out, it, before I knew it, it all snarled up, and that was kind of that, really. So there you go. So the issues with it, really, were that no power on batteries... Also then, when I was trying to listen to it, the volume control wasn't very loud. It wasn't really doing much. It was crackly, but you weren't really getting any volume out of it. I don't wonder if maybe there was a problem with the amplifier section or old capacitors maybe given out on this thing at last. But I noticed also that the mute switch didn't work properly. That's very intermittent and I could start to hear some volume coming back. So I think we've probably got a dirty mute switch. For those that aren't aware, the mute switch on this was really so that you could have a listen. You'd have your headphones and your music playing, but if somebody wanted to talk to you, you'd press the mute switch in as a momentary latch, unlatched switch there, and it would just attenuate the sound. It wouldn't completely stop the music, but it would attenuate it right down so you could hear what was going on. But obviously, if that's dirty or stuck in position, or there's a problem with a the circuit, then it attenuates the, the music and you can't hear it properly through the headphone socket. Headphone socket itself was a bit crackly, I noticed, a bit intermittent, so we'll look at that as well. Um, basically, yeah, it was just a mess. So it wasn't rewinding properly, it wasn't fast-forwarding properly, it didn't play at all. Now, it did start to play once I'd rewound it a little bit and fast-forwarded it a bit. I thought perhaps maybe the spindles were a bit stuck and fast-forward and rewind might have freed them up. Then it started playing, I got carried away, put a tape in there and thought, oh, that'll be okay. And as I say, within a few seconds, it, it nulled it right up. So I think what we'll look at today is we'll, first of all, get it running on batteries. So I think the contacts are probably just a bit, bit corroded. They are present. The springs look OK that side, but I think the contacts on the other side leave a lot to be desired. So I think we'll give them a bit of a file and a, a scrub and see if we can get them working off the batteries. So that'll be the first job. 
Then I think we'll get the back off. We'll give everything a clean. We'll clean the switches. We'll see if we can get this mute switch working. And we'll put some new belts on as well. There's two belts on this one. So there's a fast forward rewind, like a main, a thick drive belt. And then there's your main um, belt that runs off the motor. So we'll sort that as well. Basically, just give it a good clean. See if we can polish out some of the scuffs. Now, this is painted, I think. I need to just try and find out if this is self-coloured plastic or not. Because obviously, if it's self-coloured, we'll be able to polish the scratches out without hurting anything. But if it's got a surface finish on it, we've got to be careful we don't take the paint with it. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure quite how we're going to address this yet. But anyways, I think the first thing we'll do is um, see if we can clean these battery contacts and get it running off its own steam. So first things first, let's move this out of the way. Get the towel of destiny out. And start having a proper look at it. Okay, so as I say, the first thing I want to do is really just try and clean these up a little bit inside of there. So to that end, first stop, I think, is going to be a little drop of acid. And that's actually just a bit of lime, a bit of lime juice I've just put in there. Not loads, but I find I find lime juice is really good for for certainly for getting away corrosion from batteries. But if it's just if it is just rust or general patina and corrosion, then it's not so good for that to be honest. But it's a good place to start to get rid of any of the uh, the salts from battery leakage or anything like that so it's got a massive amount coming off to be honest there's a bit there i'm just gonna one of the springs definitely has a little bit of the old blue on there so i'm just gonna put a drop yeah just left a drop on there now let that fizz away for a moment and then I'm going to get some fine sandpaper. I say fine, probably not that fine. Probably like an 800 grit, something like that. Just very gently, just... Just pass it a few times over the, over the terminals. Don't really go mad, we're not trying to file away the contacts we're just trying to clean off the patina and obviously you don't want to damage the surrounding plastic either I've saved myself a little bit for the next one here look in fact I think what I am going to do is just use a little file first I don't know if you can even see. Let me get a torch on that. Just that one in the bottom corner just needs that little bit of work. So I'm going to go away and just file and sand this for a moment and I'll be back shortly. You can see now it's the top right one that's been worked on. Now, quite often we can we can do various things. We can we can scrub and file, but we can also replace the contacts if, if we need to but these ones tend to be more unique to the model they're, and they're built in so they're quite they're quite hard to replace to be honest so best thing we can do is just keep working away filing away a little bit and dressing them and just seeing if we can get some of that uh, rusting corrosion off and hopefully it will be working and we can see some of the stuff that's come off there now so it was definitely worth doing and now i've just got some isopropyl alcohol now on this one just to just to go in here and finish dressing this back a little bit. It might need some more yet. But you can see it's it's cleaning up. It might need a bit more, but this might be the time to test it and see how it's looking. So I think the first thing we'll do, I've already checked the batteries. They are almost new actually. So I know they're good for voltage. Right, here we go. Well, it didn't work before. No promises now either. But yep, there we go. Marvellous. You can see it's slipping though. There's no bite. Oh, sorry, there's no bite on that belt. Look. 
but you can see the battery light is good and strong so we know there's good voltage getting through there now so i'm happy i'm happy with that to be honest that's the first one done so battery contacts clean running off its own power right let's get this thing open so to get it open first of all do of course is lose the batteries okay now i think there's uh, five screws all together that we need to get out so we'll start here and they're only tiny screws so it's always important to remember from whence they came so those three are the same as indeed is that one but then there's a tiny one which requires a different screwdriver just in the bottom corner here and that one really is really is tiny so okay now this is the fun part because everything's kind of held in now it's kind of one of those little puzzles where each panel locks in to a different panel so on and so forth so we're just gonna we're just gonna peel this back you can see the bottom comes away bottom comes away with it and then the face plate will start to fall away as well like so but that's quite nice because we can give that a separate wash anyway and then we also then get the uh get the side panel away with the led cables and stuff like that but there we go so there's the back cover look so as long as you're careful there's no reason why that lot shouldn't sort of come away quite nicely and you'll see what i mean now just be careful with this one because you just held on now by those two two led cables all right that's that anyway to get to the rest of this now we will need to um remove the shield so we'll probably just change the screwdriver bit again for that one i think okay that one really is again tiny different color screw so keep that one aside Right, so the shield is off, and now I like to employ the kind of seven desoldering wire technique for this one. It's just much easier and quicker to get in. So to that end, we'll take the actual um, lights cables across here, the blue and the red one. We take the red one from the top. We've then got the orange and red, and then we've got the battery supply, red and blue. So there should be two, four, five, six, and seven also we need to uh, unscrew the board there's three screws tiny little washers so again just remember exactly whereabouts these come from i believe they are the same as each other Now, I don't think anybody's been in here before, judging by the position of the tape, the way the head cable is folded back there. Incidentally, we haven't got to desolder the head to um, the head leads, I should say, to get the, to the uh, the belts. You can see the belt there, actually. Seems OK. It's intact, which is good news because it means we're not, we're not going to be chasing this horrible tar or goo all around the back of the unit. So that's always a bonus. And this isn't coming off very easily, so uh, we're just dissolving the dissolving the glue with a bit of alcohol. It's the black one there as well, actually. So we've actually got nine, I think, to come off altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We may actually be able to start with these seven first. It's not the hardest job in the world, as long as you're methodical. It's quite an interesting one from a repair and restoration point of view, because this is one of those jobs it does take a while as you can see so that's the one two oops, 
missed one. Hopefully we can get this one away. So I just turned my soldering iron off, so I was hoping I could get away with this one. There she is. Right, okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cables away. I'm just going to also get rid of this bit of tape, which is falling apart anyway, holding the head together, or the head cable. And this whole thing should want to fall away, like so. There we go, fantastic. So that's how you get open and get to the belts on the uh, M3330. As you can see, it's a little bit grimy in here to say the least. So I'm gonna take some uh, alcohol and go around various surfaces, getting all this detritus away for a little moment. But also you can see here how easy it is now to access the um, the mute switch. So you can see that plunger working just there as well. So we can sort that. We'll put a little bit of, uh, maybe a bit of cleaner in these switches. We'll see how we get on. But you can see the, uh, you can see the amplifiers here. We've got the LA4140s. That's gonna be one per channel, left and right. And overall, it doesn't look in too too bad a condition we could recap the whole thing if we wanted to here but i think we're going to be all right it was working okay from what i could tell i want to get it mechanically running before we start messing about with the um with the actual electronic side of things so to that end as i say i'm first thing i'm going to do is just go around and get all the get all this cack off of all of around here um and then uh, maybe relube a couple of the critical spots and we'll go from there but also just wanted to show you really quickly, we also need to remove, if we remove the roller here as well, so be super careful because there's a spring under this. If we move this away, and this one, Use fingers as they say. There we go. Then that allows us then to access belt number one. You can see how bad that one is. I mean, I talk about teardrop shapes, and um, that's a perfect example of a teardrop belt. You can see it's quite dry as well. It's perished and it's got sort of pat patination across there. Yeah, it's like a guitar pick, isn't it, that one? So that's absolutely had it. And the one blue, let me just get the tweezers. This one runs underneath, underneath the caps. And I can feel how dry that is, actually, underneath the flywheel. And there we go. Prime example, look at that for an ellipse. So there you go, there's a couple of belts that are desperately in need of... Uh, in need of changing so we'll um what i'll do is i'll i've got some belts i've got a nice belt set for this i'm just going to go ahead and give this a bit of a clean and i'll be back in a moment okay i've just been around and given everything a bit of a wipe and a little bit of a lube i've also just put a little bit of a lube in the uh in the control pots as well hopefully clean them up a bit i'll put some contact cleaner into the mute switch and a little bit of lube hopefully that should be enough to sort that out and I'm also just going to put a little bit of contact cleaner into the headphone jack as well. That's gone straight through okay. So what I'll do real quick is just use a uh, just use a headphone jack here, a little headphone. Plug this in a couple of times. I can't see whether that's actually got any dry joints or anything on the back but we might as a matter of course we might just reflow the headphone jack because quite often they can be problematic over years of use 
so um we might just reflow them while we're here right everything's clean here the flywheel's running nicely so um yeah i'll just dig out the belts and we'll get them on so we've got the belts here nice little set deck tech belts lovely belts actually for uh especially if you're in the uk get these from mana tree now it actually comes a set with three because it's got the counter belt as well but we don't need that that's for the m triple four o the triple three o doesn't have a counter so we're okay so what we're just going to do is sneak the oh incidentally yeah there you go it's a comparison <laughs> the old and new show the deformation there look and old and new for the uh teardrop so let's get these on there we go probably couldn't see that the framing wasn't very good essentially this one goes underneath the pulley there we go nice perfect and then this one goes on the top And of course, over the motor. So you just check there's no twists, make sure it's not snagged or snarled. Yep. Okay, well, I'm happy, happy with that. So as we turn, we turn the motor, you can see that everything's turning properly as well. So that's good stuff. Righty ho. Next then we'll turn our attention to the pulley. And I'm just gonna put some idler, sorry, some rubber renew. Just gonna dip a bit of um, rubber renew onto a, onto a cotton tip and just go around and just clean up the, uh, the wheel. And then we'll get it all back together again. You can see there's not much coming off of this. This particular uh, idler is in really good condition to be fair wasn't expecting much to come off but it's always nice just to clean it up and refresh the surface of the rubber give it some extra bite just be careful if you're using rubber renew it's nasty horrible stuff use it in a well ventilated area then we refit the uh, keeper plate there now it's a nylon bushing so there's no need to grease that it's kind of self-lubricating and again we just line those screws back up make sure it's engaged properly And we just check to make sure that that's all working properly. And that's great. Okay, right, we'll get it back together. Obviously, the first thing you need to make sure of is that uh, it's seated correctly and engaged where it needs to be near any leaf switches or make sure it's not stood proud make sure the uh, little screw holes line up properly and that it generally feels happy and we can get the screws back in and we always just do the screws up loosely at first just so that we can float the board a millimetre or so if we needed to. There we go, and that's happy. So we just nip them up. Good, and let's get these, uh, get these cables soldered back on. Rightio, so we're ready to solder these back together now, pretty much. I've managed to clean the uh, tape residue off a little bit there as well. So the plan is to get these soldered on and I'm just going to reflow the headphone jack a little bit as well just to make sure that that wasn't the issue. Whilst I'm here I may actually even do the mute switch as well. No, 
Once you've done a few of these, it's not too hard to remember where they came from. The hardest part is actually just trying to, to do this without getting my big fingers in the way of the camera, really. Let's have a look. Okay, that took a couple of minutes because it was a bit uh, a bit fiddly. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven back in, and we've reflowed the headphone and the mute switch. So I think now we just start putting it back together. And this is where you can do a quick sanity check to make sure all your um, cables are attached properly. So we'll just plug it into the mains and press play. Yep. We've got the operation light there and the uh, spindle is rotating. So rewind, fast forward, good stuff. Now we can actually adjust the speed by the little variable resistor just inside there if we need to. So we can do that in a bit. We can, we'll get it all back together, hook it up, try a tape and we can always plug it into the mains and then we can adjust, we can adjust the speed from there. So basically all we're just going to do now is put this back together exactly uh, the reverse of how it came apart really. So it's just a case of interlocking the different panels and jiggling them around as one does. And then we'll get it back together, screw it down and I'll be back in a second. I find the easiest way of doing it, by the way, is to actually engage the bottom first and then you can actually then sort of squeeze it in and tuck the side panel underneath that lip. But anyway, there we go. So that's all together now. And uh, we'll just get these screws in. So she's all back together and working okay. You can see the lights on and you can hear it turning. I'm just cheating now because I'm letting the motor do the work just while I carefully run the capstan and the pinch roller. You can see the stuff coming off it. Just don't put too much pressure on. You've got to stay the right side as well of the uh, turning components, otherwise you'll get the cotton bud snarled up in there, which you don't want to do. And I'll clean the head whilst I'm in here and then we'll come and give it a try in a moment. Okay, so I've got my trusty old JSX 37 speakers. I've just put a tape in. Let's try it out. Good stuff. So that's working. The volume pot isn't crackly. Rewind is working nicely. Stop, play. And balance. Yep, that's working beautifully. Right, let's try the let's try the mute. There we go. That's spot on. That is. It doesn't completely kill it. It only attenuates it, which is what it's supposed to do. And let go. And there it is. Good. So that's working. Rewind. Fast forward. All good. Sweet. So just going back to my original list then, we've done the dirty volume pot. That's not crackling anymore. We've uh, cleaned the mute switch. That now functions correctly. We've changed the belt. So it's fast forwarding, it's rewinding and um, yeah, it's playing nicely. It works from the batteries or at least it did work, didn't it, earlier when we tried it. We better do it again now, now that we've repaired everything else. Just make sure it is working. Hopefully so, because then all that will remain is just to give it a nice clean. And there you go, that was just it running off the batteries. So perfect. So actually, it's all pretty much done. You can see, I think that's like spider poo and all sorts of stuff on that. I mean, I've not cleaned this since I actually got it, would you believe? So I think that's it then. So it's kind of working properly. Next thing we'll do is just, I think, have a bit of a tidy up here and get ready to give it a decent polish. 
Okay, so I've decided that um, I'm going to let Sleeping Dogs lie with the surface finish on this one. I've just given it a cursory wipe with a, a cleaning cloth and I am actually going to polish the clear perspex so we can see what the actual tape is doing inside. At the moment, it's so scuffed, you can't really see what's going on. I'm just going to put some plastic care and like vinyl cleaner and polish over the rest of it just to give it a nice sheen. But I think rather than trying to polish it to death, I think we'll just... Um, We'll just keep some of its natural sort of wear and tear, keep the original ink and patterns and everything on it. And then um, obviously it's playing beautifully. So that's what counts. Here it is then, the Sanyo M3330, finally sorted out. Now I've had this little while, to be honest, it's been sat in a drawer and it was pretty filthy and scuffed up. And I hadn't really tested it before, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to um, share it with you guys on the channel. Now, basically, it didn't work from the batteries. The battery terminals were pretty badly corroded, or at least one of them was. So we managed to sort that out, which is great. Also, it didn't seem to have any uh, output either from the, uh, the volume. It seemed to be quite a crackly volume pot, but also the mute switch seemed to be problematic as well. And that was kind of killing the sound. So... I think that was the main problem with that one. Also, it was playing very intermittently, if at all. The fast forward and rewind were also uh, sketchy to say the least. And it was just a bit of a mess all round really. The headphone jack was kind of a bit suspect as well. So really it was quite simple enough. We just um, cracked it open and replaced the belt. So we had to desolder the board, didn't we, of course. So that was, um, that was a little job, but as long as you're methodical, that's okay. So we've placed both of the belts and given the thing a good clean inside, clean the head, clean the capstan and the pinch roller. The capstan and pinch roller were particularly dirty. So we've given that a good clean around there, cleaned the neck and everything as well. And yeah, so now it seems to be running rather nicely. The belts are really good, so they're spot on. The mute switch is now working properly. We've cleaned that. We reflowed the solder joints to the headphone jack and, um, and indeed the mute switch as well. So yeah, tickety boo. So let's just have a quick listen to it now. Yep, and that volume is flawless now. There's no wow and flutter now with these new belts. The last two that were, were on there, the old belts, really were quite a pickle. We had an elliptical one and a teardrop one. So we've sorted that and yeah, all good. So we'll just do a quick rewind and fast forward check as well. Yep, yeah, perfect. And perfect and play. And we're away. There we go then, sorted. So... That's all, all done and I'm quite pleased with that now. So we've managed to save another one from the, uh, the back of the drawer. So thanks very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing and hit the bell for updates. We've got boom boxes, personal stereos, eight tracks, vintage games, all kinds of stuff. So it'd be great to have you on board. In the meantime, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.